Jesus, let's begin to acknowledge him. Let's call him beautiful name as usual. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Father, we are here this morning to say thank you, Lord. We are here this morning to say Arupo Ojo Esheu, Bani Bani Tan Saya Bae Masheu, Eleti Bon Baro Ye, Abe Chulu Kara Jua Jere, Eru Jeje Ton Gbenu Awa Oru Shoru, Eru Jeje Ton Gbenu Awa Oru Shogo. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, especially on behalf of Prince Tabanaku. Thank you, Jesus, because your church is standing. We worship your majesty. Brother, open your mouth and begin to appreciate him. Thank God on your behalf. On behalf of all the ministers of God. On behalf of our pastor where he is and his family. On behalf of all the men and women. On behalf of the children. Baba, we say thank you, Lord. And yet again, we worship your majesty. We are here to say thank you, Lord. We are here to appreciate you. Thank you so much, everlasting Father. We were not rushed here. We are not rushed to the hospital.
so good. Life shall be your name. Lord, you are so good. Life shall be your name. In heaven you are the Lord. On earth you reign forever. Oh, oh, oh. 
important it is to build for God. David desired to build a house for God. But God told him, you won't build for me because your hand is bloody. But irrespective of that, he prepared all the material, all the resources used to build the house of God for his son. To tell you that when you build for God, God will also build for you. So with that in our heart, mind, and soul, let's rise to our feet and give joyfully towards the building of our God and our maker. Let's rise to our feet, even as the chorister leads us to a danceable song. Chorister. Our God, joy, 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 oh joy, 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 joy overflow.
Praise the Lord. You can have our seat. Praise the Lord. Can you greet your neighbor beside you and say, Praise the Lord? Look at another neighbor and say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's an awesome time to be in, some awesome thing to be in the presence of God. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Do I have people that are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Do I have somebody that is glad to be in the presence of God? Can you celebrate Jesus? Amen. Uh, I want to appreciate the church authority, the leadership, the pastorate, everyone for this privilege. I thank God most of all for the privilege to bring the word in this first service. And I trust that the Lord would touch our hearts and that which we receive at his feet would help us even as we run through this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we open our Bibles quickly because of time? First Timothy chapter 1 from verse 18 to 19. First Timothy 1, 18 to 19. Quickly I'll read. He said, This charge I commit unto thee, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. May the Lord bring life to his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Today I want to look at a topic, we want to look at a topic titled um, Relevance in Christ. Of course, it's the same as the theme, Relevance in Christ. Uh, if you have, if you are, if you are jotting, you can underline the in Christ. You can underline the in Christ because that's that's our emphasis today. I bring us a burden from the heart of God. You see, there is this misconception in the body of Christ, or will I say in life generally, that uh, the fact that God says something means that it is automatically going to come to pass in our lives. People believe that the fact that God has said it. Of course, the Bible says that I word will never return to me void until it has accomplished that which he said unto me. But the fact that God has said it, I don't have to do anything. I just receive the word that has been spoken and I go home and I sit down. But this is Paul addressing his son Timothy in the Pauline Epistles and his letters to Timothy. And he started by saying, there are prophecies that have gone ahead of you there are words that have been spoken to you and I want you to be mindful of these things, these prophecies, so that with them you might war a good warfare. I mean, it's a prophecy. When God says something, am I not meant to rest on the word of God and believe that it's going to come to pass? Then why is somebody talking about warfare? Why is somebody talking about fighting? Why is somebody talking about, I don't know, having to do anything because it's the word of God God said let there be light and there was light hallelujah I pray God will help us in Jesus name you know last week our pastor for those in the second service started talking to us about something about relevance in Christ also and he said the first step to being relevant is that you must be prophetic hallelujah you must be prophetic and I think I held that one because to be prophetic you must have insight into the words that the Lord has spoken true or false, true, definitely and that, he didn't stop there he said God has said something but then there is a place for you to align for you to align with what God has said so I might be debunking some things in your heart this morning that feels that okay because God has said it, all things are fine I permit me to put it to you today that there is a place, there is a responsibility that you have that you have to align if not, it is possible that by the end of the year you have not seen any of the word of God come to pass in your life. And you may think that God is a liar, but we all know that God is not a liar, right? That God is true and all men are liars. So if the problem is not with God, then the problem must be with who? Hallelujah. And here is Paul talking about a warfare. And I began to think, what's a warfare? To go to war, one of the first things you need for war is strategy. You must engage a strategy because anybody that has no strategy in going into warfare has lost already. The Bible, not the Bible, a common saying is that those who fail to plan, plan to fail. It's a normal thing. So before we go into war, 
there must be a strategy. And I, I put it to you in all honesty that every year is a warfare. Because if it is not, everybody that starts the year will finish the year. All Christians in church have, in their churches, in their various churches, have a word for the year. If everybody was living by that word for the year, I don't think we are going to have poor people in this, in poor Christians in this, in this dispensation. Are you seeing the warfare dimension of things? The fact that God can say something to a lot of people and only one, two, three, four, five, ten people can come into the reality of it, it means that there is, a, there is something missing. That means there is a warfare dimension to prophecy. Hallelujah. And the strategy that God has given us, and people have been hammering on it, our pastors said it last week, is alignment. Can we say alignment? Alignment. The Bible says that the heavens and the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth has it given to the sons of men. It also says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Where? Where? Did he say in the earth? No, because he has given the earth to you to bring that word, to stand as a passage for which the reality in heaven will come through and be established on the earth. Hallelujah. And we do that through prayer. We already know that prayer is the way we transport things from the spiritual realm, from the heavenly realm into the earth to enforce God's dominion on the earth. But we cannot just pray as per we want to pray. Lord, give me money, give me this, give me that. Because when we don't pray in alignment, it's like we are wasting our time. That's why the enemy might not stop people from going to prayer meetings. Because there are people that go to prayer meetings upon prayer meetings upon prayer meetings and they see very little of the hand of God in their lives. And it looks like the enemy is satisfied because, of course, they do not understand the reality of alignment. Hallelujah. What is alignment? Alignment, because of time, I just want to rush through this. Entail seeking the face of God in prayers and abiding by his instructions. Two levels to alignment. Seeking the face of God in prayers and abiding by his instructions. Well, in all honesty, many of us have, uh, have covered the first level of seeking the face of God because we all pray. We all say, Lord, I want to be relevant. Lord, I want to do this. Lord, I want that. Lord, I want this. But the second part is where many people miss it. Because we said prayer is a communication with God, right? And in school, permit me to do a little bit of academics. We said that the levels of communication are information passage. When you pass the information to somebody, that's one level. Then the next thing, the person receives the information. That's another level. The third part, the person comprehends the information. And many of us stop there and then we say amen and we go. But there is a last part that we are missing. The last part is feedback. Can we say feedback? Can we say feedback? We don't wait to get the feedback from God. Amen. We don't wait to get the instruction from God. If you check through your Bible, nobody prayed ever. There was nobody that prayed in scripture that did not receive an instruction on what to do and it's better the miracle. But it's just that the body of Christ nowadays just wants to pray and pray, okay, I said, may this mountain be moved and cast into the sea and I move. Even Jesus that said that, the Bible says all night he goes to pray and he receives the direction for the day from the Father. Before he will come out and say, okay, let's look at the proof of that. In John chapter 11, the Bible says that he went to Lazarus' grave. You might not be able to open all the scriptures because of time. And he prayed a prayer. He said, Lord, I thank you because thou hast heard me. Did, he, did you see him pray any prayer about Lazarus in scripture? Of course, they didn't show where he prayed. That God, please raise Lazarus. God, please bring, did he pray about it? There was no place, but he said in that scripture that, Lord, I thank you because you have heard me. And then after he has said that, he spoke to Lazarus because it was settled. That means he must have settled the matter somewhere and have gotten the instruction for what he was about to do. Amen. Amen. And the reason why many of us uh, do not wait for that feedback is because when God says something, we impose our picture on it. Just like this year now that God has said, you will be relevant in Christ. Many people have already drawn up the picture of relevance in their mind. That, okay, this is what relevance means to me. It's not bad, actually. But you say, okay, for me, relevance means I'm going to be first in my class. No problem. It means, it means I'm going to buy two cars this year. Or I'm going to be...
familiar. Therefore, we think we can tag these people Christians. There was a definition of Christianity. It's just that in the end time, people have begun to put their own definition into Christianity. Instead of conforming to the ways of Christ, people are expecting Christ to conform to the ways that they think it is meant to be. That's why I said the only way that you can arrive at Christ is the doctrine of Christ. I didn't say going to church because church is, going to church is part of the doctrine of Christ. But it's the doctrine of Christ. It's not about, it's not about prayer. It's about praying the way Christ prayed. It's not just about fellowship. It's about fellowshipping how Christ fellowships. So meaning it is very important that we discover how did Christ fellowship? How did Jesus that we claim to pattern our life after fellowship? The Bible says that he said, the things that I do are not of myself, I do of my father. The doctrine of Christ was the doctrine of the father. And Jesus fulfilled the perfection of the will of God on the earth in all dimensions. Everything he did was according to instruction, was according to pattern. And people will begin to wonder, how then can I do this? I am not Jesus. We know that, okay, we say Jesus is God. But Jesus then told us in John chapter 10 verse 30, he said, I and my father, we are one. He gave us the secret. I and my father, we are one. So if Jesus and his father are one, and Jesus was able to perfectly fulfill the will of his father, then if we are going to perfectly fulfill the will of Jesus, we must be one with who? Amen. We must be one with Jesus. He said, if you abide in me and I in you. You see, many of us, we receive Jesus into our lives, so to speak, but we don't want to enter the life of Jesus. Yes, we just want to receive. Okay, I want to become a Christian. But we don't want to now enter into his body. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his, so, of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Meaning you are going to experience the different levels that Jesus experienced on the earth if truly you are going to be a Christian. His doctrines are found in his teachings. So the ability to keep the doctrines of Jesus and the Father is to be one with him. And as much as we wonder, how then can I be one with Jesus? He didn't leave us comfortless. He said, I would not leave you comfortless. Because the disciples must have been wondering, how can we do this? There was a time Jesus said, it is difficult for any rich man to enter in the heavens. And the disciples said, oh my God, that means it is impossible. We are all finished. But Jesus said, what is impossible with man? is possible with God. That is why he sent God to live in you. Because he knows that on your own, you can never do it. That is the difference between the disciples before the resurrection and after the resurrection. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. I just, I want to admonish us this morning that everything we do this year, if we can do it by the Holy Spirit, you would see a difference in your walk in life. You will see a total difference. Because he said he will teach you all things. It's just that many of us limit the Holy Spirit. We want to be taught some things. We want to be taught about the things of church. Okay, when I want to sing in the choir, Holy Spirit, what should I sing? When I want to do this, when I want to preach, Holy Spirit, what should I say? But you don't ask him, when I want to enter bus, Holy Spirit, which bus will I enter? When I want to buy something, there are five people selling the same thing. You say, Holy Ghost, which one should I approach? It's an intentional walk. It's an intentional walk. Relevance is intentional. We cannot, we cannot just stroll into relevance. There is a consciousness that we must put into it. And that consciousness is in being one with Christ. Because relevance is only in Christ. So we must be in Christ to be relevant. And we rest to our feet as we pray this morning. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to give us a, a, the grace for an intentional walk with him. The grace for an intentional. Perhaps you are here and you're a Christian or you don't even know whether you're a Christian. You are not convinced. It's, it's an opportunity to go before God and say, Lord, I am here. I want to be intentional with my work. You've just been bearing the name Christian. You've just been bearing the name Godly. But you are not walking with the Holy Spirit. God wants to have an intentional walk with you. He wants to hold your hand into relevance. And because that relevance is in Christ, Jesus said he will not speak of himself. But the things that I have said, that is what he will speak of. He will show you Christ. Holy Ghost, help us. Help us that we will walk intentionally with you onto the place of relevance. That at the end of the year, when we are taking stock, we will be able to point out growth into relevance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you know you've answered. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Can we put our hands together for Jesus?
let's stretch forth our hand to the man of God and let's ask God to visit him like never before. Please pour your heart to him this morning. God will thank you. We appreciate you for we know you are faithful. Lord, you have done that which only you can do in the life of your son. We ask, oh Lord, that let it please you this day. That this one, the grace to settle down with your word at all times. Let it be restored afresh in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, according to your word in Genesis 50, 20, that whatever is meant for him for evil, let it please you that it will be meant for good in the name of Jesus. Above all, everything that's supposed to be living that is dead, we call it forth to life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's celebrate God for his greatness in our midst this day. Lord, we thank you. We receive those words with thanksgiving. We ask, oh Lord, that your power will move into manifestation in the name of Jesus. Let's be seated in his presence. That is awesome from the throne of grace this morning. And we ask that there will be fresh unction to function in the name of Jesus. This day, I have transferred my tithe online. I want to give my tithe. Can you please be on your feet? The tithe are in the house this morning. Okay. Quickly, let's be on our feet while we give our Sunday worship offering. The choir will lead us. Let's be intentional about the giving of the offering this morning. And the Lord God will receive our offerings in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you for you have given your daughter the title so this morning. Let it please you that you will appear to her in all that she does in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. So quickly, let's be on our feet. We are giving our offering right away. You want to give directly to our account, you can do that to our account number 101-586-5372. 101-586-5372. The bank is Zenith Bank and the account name is RCCG Praise Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Copy your seat, Baba. You're ready on the Shayanu. Dance like a rat, we praise the Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Dance like a rat, we praise the Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I'll be our seed, Papa. Hanging me on the Shayanu. Sakura, we praise the Lord. You are worthy to be praised. I shall be all oh, your majesty. Oh, your majesty. Hey, we praise the Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Oba, 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 titi, aye.
online, on site. God, let it please you to bless us. Faithful one of Israel, we thank you. We appreciate you for we know you are ever faithful. Lord, according to your word in Genesis 1.28, we ask that everyone I've given this day, Lord, bless us like never before. Lord, multiply us and make us fruitful. Above all, we ask, O oh Lord, give us dominion over everything that is adversary in our life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And the people of God will shout a louder, Amen. Do we have anyone worshipping with us for the first time this morning in our midst? Today is your first time of coming to Praise Tabernacle. Can we be identified with you? Can you quickly be on your feet? Today is your first time of worshipping with us in Praise Tabernacle. Please be on your feet. God bless you, my brother. Oh, God bless you. Please, whatever you have come to church with, please pick it up and come to this VIP section. Why are we leading?
but the workers meeting will run between the hours of 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on that Sunday. Then our Sunday school will run between the hours of 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. while we woke up to a father in the Lord at the national by 9 a.m. So that's the service we'll be having next week Sunday. And by the grace of God, you and I will experience God unusual that Sunday in the name of Jesus. But this week, we'll be having our Digging Deep service. That is going to be the last service of the month. And is going to run between the hours of 6.30 p.m. and 8 p.m. Where we want to dig into the word of God. And God will give us fresh insight to his word in the name of Jesus. On Thursday, we'll be having the first communion for the month of February. I think you will celebrate God. Because he said, when I see the blood. And evil shall pass you and I over in the name of Jesus. So let's be part of that service. It's going to run between the hours of 6.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. on Thursday. So let's come and the Lord God will bless us for doing so in the name of Jesus. On Friday that same week, we'll be having live in this auditorium, the Holy Ghost service. will be opened up to the arena of the RCCG center and that is our daddy in the lord will be ministering that night and that will be streaming live because praise tabernacle is now a viewing center so go to everyone and let them know that they can view holy ghost service here in this auditorium the auditorium will be open and the service will commence by 7 p.m the Lord God will strengthen you and I will be part of it and Holy Ghost will quicken us in the name of Jesus. Also, every second Friday of every month, we'll be having Holy Ghost Hub. The maiden edition happened the second Friday in January and it's promised to be explosive this month again. The Holy Ghost Hub happens every second Friday and the time is 10 p.m. The video where we'll come and the Lord God will be with us and grant us grace to experience Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Generous in the house, shout hallelujah. We'll be having our vigil every third Friday of every month. That's men's vigil. It runs between the hours of 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. Well, let's pray together and God will continually give us victory over every area of our life in the name of Jesus. You want to know more about Praise Tabernacle, please visit our website www.praisetabernacle.com and our Facebook and YouTube channel they remain the same. RCCG Praise Tabernacle Ogombo. For your offering, for your tithe, for your first fruit, you can do that to account number 101 586 5372 101 586 5372. The bank is Zenith Bank and the account name is RCCJ Praise Tabernacle. There are several projects going on in the church. You want to be part of it? You can do that too. Account number 101 661 5945. 101 661 5945. The bank remains Zenith Bank and the account name is RCCJ Praise Tabernacle Project. Also, let's be informed and be reminded that it is compulsory for you and I to belong to a house fellowship center. And you're not living around Prince, uh, Tabernacle here in Ogombo. Please meet with Pastor Bamidele to be a part of our online house fellowship center. The Lord God will strengthen us and he will root us further in his presence in the name of Jesus. Celebrate God for another great good news. It's a wonderful time in his presence, and our national fast continues. Our prayer point for this national fast is available on our WhatsApp page and our Telegram page. Let's be part of it. Let's pray, and God will give us speedy answers in the name of Jesus. You want to give testimony, what God has done. He has made you relevant already. You want people to know about it. You want to strengthen their faith. And you want to tell the devil that, yes, I am victorious. You can send your testimony to mobile number 
081371112580 or you can come out on Sunday to share this testimony and those testimony will be permanent in the name of Jesus women of praise tabernacle shout hallelujah I think you can do better men can we help them out Glory to God in the highest. Women program will be coming off this February on the 19th of February 2023. And the team, a woman of substance. But it's rather unfortunate that you're not showing that to us this morning. So let's hear from you. Women in praise tabernacle shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I think you are now a woman of substance indeed. And God will make that a reality in your life in the name of Jesus. So, the date is 19th of February. Let's clear our calendar. Let's be part of that program. And the Lord God will make that day a memorable one unto his name in the name of Jesus. Also, let's be informed and also be reminded that next, next week, Tuesday, Digging Deep Service will not be taking physical cash offering, but will be taking a transfer offering. Or a check offering. And the Lord God will bless us, will uphold us in the name of Jesus. So today that you have come and the Lord God has blessed you, has given you another access to relevance. Let's be on our feet and let's begin to thank him. Let's appreciate him for his faithful. There's none like him. He's a faithful father. He's a God of our salvation. He's the one that declared the hands from the beginning. He's the one that knows that you need to be intentional to be relevant. Is the one that sent that word to you. Lord, we thank you. We receive those words with thanksgiving this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Quickly, let's have Redeemer's Anthem, the first stanza.
let Sunday school begin immediately. 